So not only might Zen 5 X3D actually be releasing really early now, but it actually might be really good. Let's talk about it. Before that, this video is brought to you by VIPCDKDeals.com. CDK Deals is a website dedicated to getting you the best prices on games and software, and right now you can get a Windows 10 Pro OEM key for an insanely low price. Just find the best price and apply my special discount code GPC20 for an additional 30% off. You can also check out securely with PayPal, and once the payment is cleared, you should get access to the code both in your account as well as in your email. In order to activate the new copy of Windows 10, just search Activate Under Windows and type in your key. So if you want to learn more, be sure to click the link in the description below. Okay, so Ryzen 9000 on the desktop, at least in Windows, let's be honest, it was dog shit. However, it's not necessarily because the Zen 5 core is bad. Actually, if you take a look at the design objectives for Zen 5, it's really, really good. They got this wider core with a lot more capability and it's a great base to be building upon for future CPUs and especially if you take a look at the 16% IPC uplift yeah Zen 5 looks really really good on paper so it's very bizarre that they just weren't able to get that on the desktop for the average user like you and me. I mean, we're talking about less than 5% gains, it seems like in most scenarios with Zen 5, and that is very disappointing to put it lightly. However, I think you're gonna see a huge, huge performance uplift with X3D because this issue, I think, is simply because they're still using the same Infinity Fabric design as well as the same IO die that does lead to a massive latency penalty as well as just not so great memory performance on these Zen 5 CPUs. I mean, you can improve the core as much as you want, but if you can't feed that core fast enough, if the latency isn't good enough, well, you're just not gonna see those benefits in a huge amount of tasks, especially for gaming. And that's where X3D is going to come into play. Let me explain. So all of this actually started, at least for me, when AMD had some comments on X3D in the future of it, where they said that they weren't gonna be resting on their laurels and they had some really exciting stuff to show us. Now, since then, we've gotten a ton of information on X3D and most recently, we actually saw some Cinebench R23 numbers leak for the eight core 9800 X3D, as well as the 16 core 9950 X3D. And this, by the way, is coming from Code Commando over on Twitter. Not super familiar with them, so take this with a grain of salt, but videocards.com did actually take these numbers and throw them together and compare them to other CPUs such as the outgoing 7950X3D and 7800X3D, and what we found was these are some really enormous performance uplifts, and in fact, in some cases, they're actually even eclipsing their non-X3D counterparts, and that might not sound like much, but keep in mind, this is more of a multi-core and workstation type of test, and this is typically something where actually X3D might do a little bit worse, as in the past, they've had slightly lower single core and multi-core performance, again, for workflow-oriented type of applications. Well, it looks like maybe that's not the case, which actually has me wondering if this time around, X3D is gonna be an even bigger improvement than what we've seen in the past. Perhaps higher clock speeds, perhaps higher power drop, that sort of thing, allowing it to perform at its absolute maximum. And in fact, if we take a look here at some recent information that we got from the YouTube channel, High Yield, which by the way, I'll have the whole video linked in the description below. It's really great. I do recommend giving it a watch, but he actually did highlight some very interesting information on the Zen 5 core, which could relate to the upcoming X3D models. I mean, take a look here at the Zen 4 core here, essentially under a microscope, and you can see that the through silicon vias or TSVs, which are used to connect the stacked cache to the regular 32 megabyte cache that the Zen cores have, well, they were pretty large back then, and now they're very, very small. And in fact, he actually took an even closer look at the Zen 4 versus Zen 5 CPUs and the TSVs and found that, yeah, there's some pretty major changes to the design overall, which actually led him to believe that possibly Zen 5 was originally designed with X3D in mind from the very beginning. And there's definitely something really weird that's going on here because if you actually overlay the same 64 megabytes of cache on the CPU in the same way that we did on Zen 4, well, you'll see that it actually overlaps onto the cores and that's really bizarre, suggesting that a change might be coming to 3D cache with Zen 5. In fact, he suggests, and I think this could actually be a possibility, that multi-stacking of 3D cache might become a thing. Now, if they do that and they actually do have a slimmer 
designed for this 3D cache that could potentially be part of the reason as to why clock speeds could be going up on these 3D cache CPUs. Taking a look again at these performance numbers for these Zen 5 X3D CPUs, assuming this is correct, well, maybe this plus, say, PBO, and it starts to make a lot of sense. And on top of that, we might actually be seeing a very significant change to 3D cache when it comes to the 16 core models. Now in the past, the 16 core models have only come with one chiplet or CCD with the 3D cache and the other one didn't. Now this has been a huge problem because with only one of them having, well, the basically good cores, I guess you could say, unfortunately there was a lot of scheduling issues as the other cores actually clocked higher and Windows was wanting to use those and so AMD had to make all kinds of adjustments to make it use the faster gaming cores and it didn't always work. It was a mess, I owned one, I think many people would agree with me, that was not great. But if both CCDs actually have the 3D cache, well, this issue should, at least in theory, entirely go away, giving you a very smooth and hassle-free gaming and workstation type of CPU. And that's exactly what everybody wants, including me. The 9950X3D, if it does indeed have two CCDs, both housing 3D cache, could be a monster CPU and a huge, huge uplift and just better CPU overall versus the 7950X3D. If we take a look here at my estimated performance and specs for the CPUs, you can see that the 9800X3D, I am estimating to have between 5.3 and 5.5 gigahertz for the clock speed, a pretty significant jump over the five gigahertz that we saw on the 7800X3D. And I'm also expecting it to get close to 25% higher gaming performance than something like a 7950X or roughly 9950X as well, since those two CPUs are basically identical, let's be honest. Now, the reason why I come to this conclusion is that, well, typically X3D can give you 10 to 15% more performance on its own, at least when you throw it on Zen 4. But on top of that, we also have potentially higher clock speeds this time around, as well as a pretty significant IPC jump as well. And if the 3D cache does alleviate all the memory problems that we're seeing on the Zen 5 cores, well, yeah, you could finally see that full 16% IPC uplift actually come into play and you add all that stuff up and yeah 25 percent higher performance doesn't seem too unreasonable and would actually be a pretty significant jump over the 7800 x3d at the same time and the 9950 x3d this is one that i would be very excited for because finally you'd be able to get the same gaming performance as the eight core model no weird issues and you could be talking about again double the cache. That's going to be really good. And in fact, some applications that are very, very cache dependent could actually be really, really good on the 9950X3D. But as good as this sounds, when are we going to actually get these in our hands? And I got even more good news for you because there's also been another leak about that as well. Now, this information does appear to be coming from the Chip Hell forums. Definitely take this with a grain of salt, but I've been hearing a lot of rumors online as well as this that allegedly we could be seeing it coming out very, very soon. It sounds like the 9800X3D could be coming out this October, followed by the 16 and 12 core models early next year. And if that's the case, guys, this is gonna be a very, very exciting update for these Zen 5 CPUs, and it should put them in direct competition with Intel Arrow Lake, which is also looking really good. So whether you wanna wait for Arrow Lake or Zen 5 X3D, it sounds like it's not gonna be that long, and you'll finally be getting all the performance you were maybe originally expecting out of Zen 5, and Intel will finally be solving their power problems, their stability problems, and giving you a very significant performance uplift too, giving you two really great options in not too long. But either that's just what I think. Do you think that Zen 5 X3D really will be a significant performance uplift over Zen 4 X3D, or do you think that it's gonna be very small? Let me know your guys' thoughts in the comments below, and of course, I'll see you in the next video. If you made it to the end of the video, be sure to drop a like. Every time you do so, AMD and NVIDIA release new GPUs. Also, if you want to see more, check out one of these related videos. You won't be disappointed.